Hi, I'm Dennis DiCicco, Senior Editor of Sky and Telescope Magazine here in San Jose, California at the 2009 Advanced Imaging Conference. I'm speaking now with Rick Hedrick, CEO of Plane Wave Instruments. Uh, Plane Wave is a relative newcomer to the industry, but Rick isn't. Uh, Rick spent, what, 11 years at Celestron? Yeah, 11 years. Before you founded Plane Wave, what, two, two three years ago? About, about three and a half years ago. Okay, yes. well, I'll tell you what, you've got a, more telescopes here than I think anybody else, and you had a lot of different stuff. So let's jump right in, and we'll kind of start with the smallest and move around to the, the largest. Sure. So what do you got here you can tell me about? Okay, this is our 12 and a half inch CDK. That stands for a corrected Dalkirkum. So corrected Dalkirkum is a um, modified Dalkirkum with a corrector lens kind of near here in the back. And, and the whole idea of the telescope is that it gives a flat field, a big flat field and there's no off-axis coma, no off-axis astigmatism. And so like even this 12 and a half inch telescope as it comes right here, covers a 52 millimeter field. All right, so you were, you were looking at building these for the new large CCD chips. That's what's nice. These telescopes were designed with digital imaging in mind. Absolutely. All right. So it just it, go backwards. With the CDK, you got it's like a two mirror system. You got a primary mirror, secondary mirror, and then you set a two element corrector in the back. That's right. All right. So basically, all of your telescopes are the same optical configuration. So here's the 12 and a half inch. Let's take a look at the uh, large one here. This is a. This is a 17 inch. 17. Yep. This is our uh, CDK 17. Now this is an open truss as opposed to a closed tube like the 12 and a half was. Um, the 12 and a half that we are looking at is an F8 system. The 17 is an F6.8 system. It's just a little bit faster. A little bit faster. Yep, but it's the same thing. It's a primary mirror and a secondary mirror and a two element lens group All right. in the back of the telescope. So how big, how big a field does this one got? What's the imaging circle? Th this also covers a 52 millimeter image circle. It actually goes a little bit bigger than that, but it's optimized yeah. for 52 because that's pretty much the biggest so chip. The, these are the big chips that are out there today. That's right. All right. And that's, so it's a 17 inch F6.8. I notice you get, as in the 12 and a half inch, you get carbon fiber structure here for thermal control. All right. So you've got stuff on the back here where you can power up your camera and your focuser? Well, yes, yeah, so what we have here is we have uh, power for the fans. You can turn the fans on and off manually, or you can turn them on auto if you have this hooked up to a computer. Um, you also can plug, you, there's a hand control in here that I'm not showing right here, and that will tell you the position of your focuser, that will tell you the um, temperature, it allows you to calibrate the focuser. Um, now this is an electronic focuser. This kit that I have in the back here is called the EFA kit, the Electronic Focusing Accessory. And that's an extra $800 for, the, for this kit. But that allows you to focus from your computer. If you have an automated telescope, it allows you to use other um, ASCOM compatible uh, software packages to control the focuser. And it also reads out the temperature ambient and reads out the temperature on the primary mirror. So this is kind of the way of controlling the, the whole focusing of the telescope. All electronic with the All back. electronic. And I have that also on the 12 and a half. And, and All, right. Our, All right, so let's move on to the next largest one here behind me. All right. So Rick, we're looking here now at your 20 inch. Yes, this is the CDK 20. It is also F6.8. Um, and again, secondary mirror, primary mirror, and a lens group uh, right back here. And again, we have uh, our uh, focuser, which is a 3.5 inch focuser on the 17 and on the 20. And I'd showed on the um, 12 and a half, it was a 2.75 inch focuser. All right. And the focuser runs on a lead screw, which you can see here, and it's driven by these bevel gears. The idea is that focusers carry a lot of weight with these big cameras. Um, and as you rotate relative to gravity, and rotate the telescope in different positions, um, focusers creep. So running on a lead screw doesn't allow the focuser to move at all. So we can maintain our focus as we slew across the sky. We have an ellipsoidal primary mirror and then we have a spherical secondary mirror. Both these are fairly easy to make, and that makes the CDK cost less than competing telescopes are in this class. So, we, you know, the, the, an ellipse um, is, there's a sphere is the easy shape to make, an ellipse is next, then a parabola, and then a hyperboloid. So we really are making a fairly easy shape, so it makes it less expensive, and it makes it easier to make good quality optics. The hard, the, the the steeper that curve is, if you make a parabola or a hyperbola, it's much harder to make really good smooth optics. Now this scope is on your own mount. 
Yeah, this is the Ascension 200 mount. This is a brand new product that we're introducing. Um, it has a 200 pound payload capacity. Um, one of the reasons we needed a mount with that capacity is there's not too many mounts out there that actually can hold our 20 inch telescope. And it's hard to find a good fit for that. Um, so this mount was really designed to, to hold our 20 inch very well. It has 12.1 inch gears on both axes. Um, it has built in um, PEC sensors so we know where the worm position is. So we have permanent PEC. All right, piece, permanent periodic error correction. Yes, thank you. Um, in addition, we have the ability to run cables through the mounts. And here we have one of our access covers off so you can see. We have, as you can see here, um, this is an, an example, a uh, three-pronged power plug that runs through the mount, through the declination axis, comes out here, goes through um, a cut here, and goes right down through the back of the telescope and comes out the back here. So that's really nice. So you, you can run all types of cabling for your cameras, for your power supplies, everything like that, through the mount, so they're not going to get snagged as the mount slews across the sky. Yeah, and you do not need to take the mount apart to put these cables in. That, that's a really nice advantage. You can feed them through and you just can feed them to catch the right. them with your fingers and slide them under the covers. Exactly. Very nice. You want to go a little bit on to the future? You want to show me what you've got over here? Yeah, so what we have here is um, the CDK 700. This is a 0.7 meter uh, telescope. Which it, is 20... About 28 inches. 28 inches. And this is what we feel the future is. You know, most of the professional scopes are doing this. We're trying to bring the technology from professional scopes down into, you know, th this market, into, into yeah. our market. Okay. So this is a, an Altas telescope. is a NASMITH focus. So Which NASMITH mean? focus means the focus comes out the side here, out of the altitude axis. And so really, you could put an eyepiece here or a camera here. If you put a really big camera, it doesn't change the balance of the telescope. Um, you, this would be great for wheelchair access. You could actually sit in a chair and view. Um, you can also rotate the, well, let me describe the optics that are in here. There's a primary mirror that you can see down here. The light hits the primary mirror, hits the secondary mirror above, and comes down and hits the, where a tertiary mirror would be, right in here. And the light comes out and goes out through this NASMITH focus. Now we can rotate this tertiary mirror to go out the other side of the NASMITH focus, and you can have a dual NASMITH focus system. So you so could you put instrumentation on both axes of the tele on both sides of the telescope, and just by exactly. flipping the mirror, you could switch from a camera to say a spectrograph or something like exactly. that. Exactly, exactly. Right. Now what type of motor drives have you got in this system? So the, the other kind of revolution in this is that we're, we're, we have direct drive motors. It's a big electric, three-phase electric motor that runs in here, and it direct, is directly coupled to the axis of the telescope. So it's directly driving the telescope. No gears. No gears at all. So it's very stiff, very reactive. You know, if um, we have, again, a high-resolution encoder on this telescope, as we did on our last one, and that high-resolution encoder and that motor are coupled together to make the servo loop that's driving the telescope. So this telescope will even resist wind gusts as, as a wind, if, you, if you were to come and push the telescope, it will instantaneously start pushing back. So if wind comes along, um, it'll actually start pushing back against the wind to fight the wind. So, so it, it's a very quick, stiff mount, and, very, and it reacts very quickly. Right. The, the advantage to, um, to an Altaz mount, the reason we go to an Altaz mount, is you can have a much bigger telescope in a much more compact package, and it's a lot more rigid and uh, stiff because it's much smaller. Yep. It doesn't take nearly the mass to, for a 20 inch telescope, it doesn't take nearly the mass as it does if this was equatorially mounted. So it's less expensive that way and, and you actually get improved performance because we're able to have a very stiff mount. So Rick, I want to thank you very much for telling me about this. You've got a lot of scopes here. It looks like a lot of technology, a lot of new things happening for a fairly new company. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much, right, Dennis. Thank you. I'm Dennis DiCicco, Senior Editor for Sky and Telescope Magazine here at the 2009 Advanced Imaging Conference in San Jose, California.